that my soul could depend. My soul cries out for your presence in here. This very hour for your presence. God bless you. I hope you're having a wonderful Monday. Welcome to another tea time and Bible study. I got my tea here. And as you can tell, um, I have a dear, dear friend here, uh, Kasena, who actually I just met recently on social media. Um, he happened to have joined one of my um, phone call prayer calls. And I remember this voice praying and it was just so anointed, his prayer is so powerful. I followed him on Twitter and I saw that he posts such beautiful prayers online. So go ahead and follow him, he's a fantastic follow. He's such a beautiful brother in Christ. I'm so happy for all you guys to join. We are all live, guys, I see your comments. We're gonna be um, digging in through Romans chapter one. Kasena, hello. Hello, hello. hello. I'm great, it's so good to see you. It's so good that you're a part of it. Um, let me know, guys, if the audio, if you can hear him clearly. I was having a little issues with audio. Let me make, just let me know if you can hear him well. Um, but I also, I actually wanna give another little background. You can also thank Kasena for this Bible study because Kasena and I were talking um, via direct messages and uh, I, you know, I, I had a little video that I did about um, Carl Lentz and Hillsong and kind of calling out the false teaching there as Paul did as well, he called out false teaching, not to shame him, but just to warn the sheep. And and, and Kasena and I were talking and Kasena was like, what? and I was like, people, some people were like, let's do a Bible study. And I was telling Kasena, I'm like, I think we should do a Bible study, you know? And he was like, I, I think it's fantastic. We need to, uh, people need to hear the word. And uh, Kasen and I were supposed to, you know, jump on the first broadcast together. Uh, he wasn't able to because he has kids and he's you know, busy and has a life, but um, you know, and, uh, but I'm so happy you're here now. And I know you'll be here often with us. God willing. Defin definitely. I try to make room for the word of God as often as I can. So I, I definitely want to be a part of what God is doing. Honor to be here, truly. Oh, praise God. The honor is ours. And uh, Jesus, we're so grateful. Um, would you like to lead us in prayer before we start? Yes, I can do that. Praise God. Uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to come together as people, Lord God, and truly dive into your word, to research your word, Lord God to reveal to us these hidden truths, Lord God, that are embedded in your word, Lord. Every time we read this word, Lord God, more of it comes alive to us, Lord God. We pray that you would anoint Anna and myself as we rightly divide this word, Lord God, to encourage the people, Lord God, to bring life, Lord God, to those who be spiritually dead, Lord God, to bring some truth to those who have been listening to lies for a long time, Lord God. And it is not only us, Lord God, that is able to do this, but there are many that you have called for such a time as this to strengthen the church, to add daily as many as such as will come in the name of Jesus. We just pray that you would be with us, Lord God. Speak through us, Lord. Help us to diminish so that you may increase, Lord God. Let people hear directly from you from the throne of grace and to hear about your love, Lord God, and your goodness and your kindness, to hear your desires to reconnect with your creation in the name of Jesus, Lord. We thank you for all that you have done and all you're continuing to do. Be by our side, Lord God, as we dive into this, Lord God, and speak to us, we ask all this in hum humbly in Jesus' name we in pray. In Jesus' Amen. name, amen. Praise God. Romans 2, 4, it's the goodness of the Lord that leads people to repentance, to repentance when they see how good God is. Praise oh. God. Yeah. And one of them who got to see how good God is was Paul. Uh, formally before that Saul Saul of Tarsus well let me pull you up because you're blinking over here let me just pull this up over here okay praise God praise God the audio is good just let me know 
Someone said, Kassan is my favorite. Praise God. Amen. Hear both of us. Praise the Lord. Lord, we also bind any disruptions in the airwaves, Lord God. Technology, just be protected in the name of Jesus. You know, it's so funny. Uh, Kassan, I don't know if I told you, but I was doing a, a, a live broadcast with a Pastor uh, Pastor Sajid, a friend of mine from Pakistan a, few, uh, a month ago. And we prayed before we started, and uh, we prayed that the airwaves just be perfect. And literally, I kid you not, God is our witness, and so is He, that the second we finished our uh, interview, you know, it was like an interview, like conversation. Yeah. As soon as I said bye, you know, see you later, boom, the internet cut out all over the town. The internet cut out because uh, there was wow. a thunderstorm coming, and the oh, wow. second, I'm not even kidding, the second. So praise God. Okay, so again, speaking wow. of someone, um, and by the way, the, what we're going to go through ch Romans chapter 1. We're live, guys. Welcome, welcome. God bless everyone. Um, Trump has led you to God. Praise God. Um, we're praise all God. in need of you know salvation and mercy, and no, you know, no one is perfect except the Lord, so praise God. But I'm going to do an intro, and I'm going to let Kasena... Um, you know, lead us in reading of the word and going, we're going to go verse by verse. We're going to dig into it where we, we, we have your comments pulled up. We want to, this is a, an engaging um, Bible study. We're all together in case there's something we've missed or you've received in this Holy Spirit. You know, we're brothers and sisters in Christ to, to such a time as this, like Kasena said, Esther 414, to go through the word and encourage each other and also prepare ourselves, know the word really well. Um, praise God, Romans is an amazing chapter. So Paul, uh, uh, formerly Saul of Tarsus. Now Saul of Tarsus got to see God's grace and mercy because he was obviously persecuting the Christians. Uh, he was very zealous for God. Paul has an interesting background. He was Saul until he had his Damascus moment where he became, you know, Apostle Paul. Um, where the Lord changed his name. He was a new creation in Jesus. So Paul is interesting because he has uh, his three influences, uh, you know, in his life. Number one, he was raised and born as a Jew. His mother and father were Jewish. Um, he was born in Tarsus, which was the northeastern part of the Mediterranean. And the second influence he had was he knew Greek. And he knew Greek, uh, probably learned it in Tarsus. And then the third is that um, he was also Roman because his father was a Roman citizen. So he was a Roman by inheritance, which afforded him a few luxuries, not many, but a few, uh, a few privileges. No, I wouldn't say luxuries, but a few little privileges. He was, he, he was uh, protected from a pre-flogging one time when he was going into the temple, into the Jewish temple, it was illegal. Uh, for him to come because he was like a Gentile, but since he was a Roman citizen, he didn't get flogged. But as we know, you know, Paul went through a lot of persecution. He went through a lot of, you know, pain and suffering, but he was also, uh, he, when he was executed in Rome, he was beheaded, not crucified. Um, again, because he was a Roman citizen and as a Roman citizen, beheadings are quick and uh, they, the Romans left the crucifixions to everyone else that's not a Roman that was sentenced to execution. So there's that interesting background. So with um, Romans, with Romans, the book of Romans, another little tidbit of background that I think is fascinating. In the ancient world, letters were actually very rare. In the ancient world, letters were very rare. Uh, it was very expensive to write, to have a letter even delivered. Obviously had to go on horseback. It was very expensive. So the you know, out of the letters found, normally they were about 20 words to 200 words long. Uh, Romans is the longest letter that Paul wrote. And he wrote this letter, it was 7,000 letter, 7,000 words long, 7,000 words long, the longest letter in ancient history. Uh, there, there was um, Seneca's 4,000 word letter that they found. Uh, Paul blew it out of the water. That's almost twice as big. So super long. It was, it's, and, and, and Paul would write letters. He has 13 letters that he wrote to churches and individuals. He had um, four personal letters that he wrote. He wrote to Philemon, um, Timothy twice, and Titus, four personal letters. He wrote eight occasional letters to churches um, and Romans being one of them, and a general letter, Ephesians, 
So that's pretty interesting. So, um, yeah, so let's jump into it. Romans chapter one. By the way, guys, we're reading from KJV, King James Version. I will no longer be using NKJV. There are some words that are kind of different, um, not little, not little ones, sometimes really big differences. So um, I prefer to study KJV. I read NASB, I read NIV, I read NKJV, um, but I, I study, I study KJV. So we're gonna have our studies KJV. So let's go and pull up the Bible over here. Amen. Kasena, praise God, amen. I'm so glad all of you guys are here and we're gonna go through the word together. It's so beautiful to just have us all together. So here, Kasena, take it away. Let's read Romans chapter one, verse one, and we'll go through verse by verse. Yeah, real quick, if you wanna learn more about Paul, you can read about him in the book of Acts. The majority yes. of the book of Acts is about Paul. Um, from his, the point from his persecution of the church to his conversion, to his uh, eventual many things actually shipwrecks yeah. <laughs> uh, many so if you want to learn more about Paul it's in the book of Acts so we're going to start Romans 1 and 1 by the way that's actually a really great point um, more than I meant to say this thank you for reminding me more than half of the New Testament is either written about Paul in Acts or it's written by Paul with the letters right. and uh, one other interesting tidbit about Paul is that when he had his Damascus moment, he went to Arabia for three years and was in the presence of God, I'm sure getting revelation. And then most people don't know this, but after the three years, he actually, he didn't go right into ministry right away. He actually spent another 10 years at home, in his hometown, probably again, in, you know, with the Lord getting revelation. And then it was only when he met Barabbas at the church of Antioch. Oh, Barnabas, Barnabas. Uh, Barnabas, yeah. Barnabas, thank you. Uh, Barnabas, did I say Barabbas? Barnabas, hello. Um, he met Barnabas at the church of Antioch. And um, the the prophetic word came, okay, the Lord is releasing you now into ministry. And so he jumped off into ministry. So it was about right. 10 to 13 years um, before he jumped into ministry. And, you know, when the when, when the Lord lets you know sends you out, that's when you go. So, amen. Praise God. All right. <laughs> okay, we're going to start it. Paul, uh, uh, Romans chapter 1, start at verse 1, and I'll stop at verse 3. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. Oh. Perfect. Praise God. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to, to be an apostle, separated a gospel of God, which he had promised before by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of, you know, of David, according to the flesh. Praise God. Amen. So um, there are, I feel like this is a, a Bible study in of itself though, but there's there's a genealogy, right, that you can follow in the scripture. It goes from Adam, follows it all the way down to David, and follows from David all the way to uh, Joseph, uh, who is of the lineage of David, and also leads to Jesus. So Joseph was uh, Jesus's father, and Mary also is in that same lineage. So that's that's where it's speaking about um, in verse three concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord, which made flesh, the seed of seed of David according to the flesh. So if you yeah. want to follow that genealogy, I believe that's in. Um, you can see that in Matthew. Let me just double check that. Yeah, and what's so interesting is that, um, you know, as you were saying, he fulfilled the seed of David. That's the flesh, right? He, he had human nature. Jesus had the nature of a human. But he also, right. in the next verse, he had the spirit, the nature of God via the Holy Spirit as well. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, it is in Matthew. It's Matthew chapter 1. From one to sixteen, and it's basically I don't I don't want to read the whole thing, but it's you know Abraham begat so and so, and it goes all the way down. So you can read that. Amen. Um, and 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 I I want to jump in and say also the Greek word um, for servant when he said servant, the Greek word for that is doulos, 
It signifies more than just a servant. It's more of a bond slave. It's, it's someone who chose to serve a master out of love. Right. Zulos to serve a master out of love, and it's it's, and it's a uh, it's a proclamation that they're a servant until death. So it, it, it's such a heavy, not even heavy, but it's such a meaningful word. He doesn't just call himself a servant; he calls himself a bond slave. You know, it says in the Bible that you're either a slave to sin or you're a slave to Jesus. And you know, being a slave to the Lord is freedom, right? And those who know the truth are made free. So it's this, you know, um, beautiful. Uh, just giving it not to, it says in the bible to worship the lord not just with your you know with your mind it's with your whole heart mind and soul and all your strength and so he was just giving up his whole entire body and his whole entire spirit to be a bond slave to jesus um and also with the, the word separated he was separated right um that word separated it, it's an hour it actually comes from uh, Aramaic word for separated and actually that's where it, the root word of Pharisee because Pharisees are the separated ones and right. so it actually comes from you know that root word um, and and what Paul is saying that unlike the Pharisees that are I don't know if he's saying that but it, you can kind of read into it where you know the Pharisees were the separated ones but they were self-righteous they kind right. of you know um, they had a different type of separation where with Paul, he said, I was separated by God, by God Almighty, separated for him um, to do his purpose and his will, not because of self-righteousness, but because he was chosen by the Lord. Amen. 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 Uh, and considering Paul, all the things, his the start of his, the start of the revelation of Christ from the point there, um, it's an axe where the Lord knocks him off the horse and it's, it's, and he's like speaking to him and he's like, who are you, Lord? And he's like, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. Yeah. Right? This, that, that's, we're never going to have experiences like that or we might, but I, I feel that Paul, after everything, Paul had such a significance that God had placed on his life to deliver this gospel that even his very first encounter was one of a, a, a miraculous revelation that God had the light was the light of God where it was so bright that it blinded him mm -hmm. and even in Genesis when Moses was with communing with Christ uh, with God on the mountain when he was obtaining the Ten Commandments when he came down they had to drape a veil over his face because that light of God yeah. was shining off his face Right, so Paul had to go and seek out or give him instructions to find Ananias um, on the street called Straight so that he could receive healing. Right, so after you experience something like that with God, you're willing, though, you know, to, to separate yourself. And God, if this is not to say that Paul's uh, experience, initial experience with God, was, is more significant than anyone else's, but when you have an encounter with Christ, you know 100% that this is, is Christ, and it is life-changing. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to mm -hmm. say that. Mm -hmm. uh, so we can, you want to go from verse 4? Sure. Verse 4, and declared to be. So Jesus, right? I'm going to go back to verse 3. Well, actually, that well, that's actually later. Okay, so I'm just keep going. So verse four, and declared to be the Son of God with power. Oh yeah. So verse three, where it says he he was he's the seed of David according to the flesh. He had the human nature, right? But he was also verse four and declared to be the Son of God with power. So human nature and nature of God, according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead, by whom we have received grace and apostleship which by the way notice that it's grace first and then apostleship for yeah. obedience to the faith among all nations for his name among are ye also the called of jesus christ right amen amen so when it says declared declared to be the son of god so declared um it's actually the greek word uh horizo and horizo is the root word for horizon, right? Declared. It's, uh, you know, you, there's a clear delineation. Uh, there's a, it's marked out by a boundary, right? So Jesus had the, was a seed of God. 
uh, excuse me, the seed of, uh, of David, right? Human nature, but he was also marked and divided in the fact that he was not just a man. He was also the son of God. And it was, it was revealed with power according to the spirit of holiness. It was revealed with power by the mighty miracles he was doing as he was proclaiming to be the son of God. He, he revealed it in his miracles. He came with the kingdom of God and also with his resurrection, uh, with his death, resurrection, and then ascension as well. So, you know, he displayed um, that he was who he said he was because of the power of holiness that was upon him. Right. And, um, yeah, and so it's so interesting because the Jews crucified Jesus because he claimed to be the son of God. Okay. Right. But God resurrected Jesus because he was the son of God. Amen. Amen. And if, if you look at uh, John chapter 1, um, I don't want to read the whole thing, but um, in verse in verse 32 to 30, 34, it says, And John bare record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptized with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. Amen. So the Lord had spoken to John, because John was asking, when, How am I going to know when the Savior comes? Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, The one upon whom thou shalt see the spirit descending and remaining on him. The same is he which baptized with the Holy Ghost. And that's how John knew this person who had the ability to, to save men by giving them the gift of the Holy Ghost. This was going to be the one mm -hmm. who was truly the son of God. Amen. That's in John 1 from 32 to 34. Amen. And I, again, want to remind everyone, um, if you have any, any revelations of these verses, type it into Periscope. We have it open and we're, we want to hear what, if you, you have any revelations as well. Um, and I also want to go to the point of obedience, right? Verse five, by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, obedience of faith. So, and again, he's, he, and we're going to go through, um, in this chapter and also in this entire letter in this entire book right it was a letter where um paul is going to point out the sin that's in the gentile world world and how that's going to lead to you know judgment the the wrath of god but also he's going to point to um later on i think it's uh chapter eight where he's going to point out the actually no it's chapter two where he's going to point out the jewish sins and how that's going to also lead to judgment and he's also going to point out um at, at the end of the letter the, the the gentiles and the jews are deserving of the wrath of god because of sin but because of what jesus did through him there is power of salvation and so we see the obedience of faith to obey the gospel the message of jesus is to believe right we all sure. see jesus um we all fell because of the disobedience of Adam. But we were all made whole and made righteous with God because of the obedience of one man, and that is Jesus Christ. So the obedience of faith is believing in him because of his obedience, not because of our obedience, but because of his obedience are we saved through Christ, through his blood. Um, and it's, 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 you know, uh, we're, 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 uh, you know, we're made righteous by faith. So praise God for that. And all nations in, um, is a Greek word, ethio, uh, ethos, and ethos means Gentiles. So go into the entire Gentile world, uh, you know, for his name, among which ye are also saved Jesus Christ. So do you want to continue with verse seven? Yes. Um, do you want to verse seven? Yeah. And I'll stop at nine. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, to all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all. Your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. 
For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers, making requests, if by any means now, at length, I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come to you. Amen. Amen. Add. Yeah, so when when uh when Paul says throughout the whole world, which by the way, let me actually give some backup with this. So Romans was a letter written by Paul for a church in Rome that he hasn't even visited yet. You know, usually in Paul's ministries, he would go to, you know, went to he went to um um the, he went to the Thessalonians, he went to the um Thessalona town to uh you know to start a church and he went to you know philippi as well and so on his journey into well philippi first and then thessalon and then he went to corinth corinth um started the corinthians church and so he was planting churches everywhere but then he was also looking over them by um by sending them letters so he had people that were giving him messages how it's going are people obedient or are people following the word are there false teachers coming in are there false apostles there were also false letters by paul that was going around um and he he was not only you know incur he also was, he also was encouraging them saying i know that there are wicked men around you i know that there are zealous jews around you saying what are you doing and persecuting you and even zealous wicked Gentiles around you as well who were, you know, in Rome, by the way, in the city of Rome, the capital of Rome was extremely wicked. Um, a lot of perversion, a lot of wickedness that he talks about is all in that city. And, um, you know, unnatural relationships and all of that kind of stuff. So with Rome, to the you know to the Romans he this was a church he hasn't visited yet but he wanted to encourage them because he heard that a church was was uh, you know planted there and so he was encouraging them and letting them know uh, and, and imagine if you just open up a church you heard the word of God and now you have you know Apostle Paul writing you a letter which is the longest letter in ancient history uh, encouraging you and also letting you know in case they maybe have not heard that sin this is what sin is and be careful and and this is the light of the world jesus and um to encourage them to build them up and uh so so rome so he hasn't been to rome but he's writing this beautiful letter to them and uh so so when he says the whole world here he meant rome uh the, the roman empire because that was the uh, main empire at the time when you look at daniel's chapter two you know you have these four major empires the first one, the, the, the gold helmet, the, the gold head on the statue uh, represents um, Babylon. And then the second one, the silver, represents Medo Persia. The third one after that represented the Greeks. And then the Roman Empire is the fourth, the one of iron and mixed with iron and clay. So the Roman Empire, so when you're saying the world, the Roman Empire there. Um, and then also verse 11. For I long to see... Oh, we're, we're not there yet, so we'll, we'll get there. So you want to continue reading verse 11? Yes. Yeah. Uh, where would you like me to start? Oh, for I long to see you. Where, I, where would you like me to start? Or just, oh, just stop? Read? Oh, eh, we can read until 12. 11, 12 is good. Okay. <laughs> for I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift. To the end ye may be established. That is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and of me yeah so verse 11 for I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift so you know impartation uh, is totally biblical and laying hands on people and imparting onto them but also and to, to the end to the end that you may be established est established the word established in Greek is sterizo and sterizo means strengthened established set fixed in so they can endure till the end right this uh you know those who who will endure till the end shall be saved as jesus said amen okay so let's go on to 13. okay now i would not have you ignorant brethren that in times i purposed to come unto you but was led hitherto that i might have some fruit among you also even as among other gentiles Mm -hmm. I am a debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and the unwise. Amen. So here he's saying he's a debtor 
right? He's under obligation, duty to bring the Bible forth to the cultured, right? Right. To to the to, to the Greeks, to the cultured, and also to the barbarians, to the uncultured. He is indebted right. to share the word with both cultured and uncultured. There is no, um, you know, we're all made in the image of God. We're all image bearers, whether you be barbarians or whether you be super intellectual Greeks at the time, um, writing lots of poetry and philosophy, uh, which he's actually going to point to later on, the philosophy of the Greeks, the making themselves wise, they, they actually were foolish. Um, right. And uh, so, yeah, by love, he's obligated to preach to the cultured and the uncultured. Right. And then in the, there are other... Um, there's a who is it Philip I believe that's preaches to the Ethiopian eunuch mm -hmm. so uh, when you were speaking about the world I was thinking about how um, the word it, it it finds it finds its way to whoever is hungry for it yeah. because that eunuch was sitting there by water just reading about prophets right he, he didn't know anything about Jesus he was just reading about prophets and he was like, I, I, I barely understand this. Yeah. And God had only allowed Philip to pass by. And, and then he was able to baptize that man. And who knows any other souls that Ethiopian was able to, to go off. Exactly. And reach, you know. So, you Amen. know, the word will not go forth void, but it will accomplish. That's right. That was to do. Amen. Amen. And Randy said, we're all one. Exactly. The cultured and the uncultured, we're all one. And um, we're all one through Jesus, through his power, through his self, his, his, he's, he's our deliverer. Amen. Hello. True. Hello to those, those uh, coming in. Welcome. Praise God. We are on Romans chapter one. We're on now verse um, 15. 15. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so as much as it, as much as is, as, so as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is power, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Amen. To ev oh, you froze. Three. Praise God. And stop praise there. God. Let's yeah. stop there. Verse sixteen. Verse right. sixteen. Powerful. Awesome. Powerful. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Ashamed. Right? This is so interesting because in this verse, it actually fulfills, Paul fulfills Isaiah 28, 16. Watch this. I'm going to pull it up. Isaiah 28, 16 reads, Therefore, thus says the Lord God, behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a tested stone, a costly cornerstone, costly, right? The price of the Lord is life. Costly cornerstone for the foundation firmly placed. He who believes in it will not be disturbed. He who believes in the Lord will not be disturbed. And uh, when it's, it also says, other versions say, not in haste, not disturbed, not stricken with panic, right? Not given away or not, you know, not going to give it away. They, they're not ashamed. They're not going to be ashamed of the gospel of Christ because they understand it is the power onto salvation. Right. To everyone that believeth. Again, you have to believe. You know, you have to believe in what Jesus did. We are, we're right, we're, we're, you know, we're justified through faith through the what he, of what the obedience that he had that Jesus had so it's so beautiful here and Paul says that often he says it in first Timothy as well uh, he says in a lot of his letters not ashamed of the gospel I don't care if I look crazy to the world when I impart gifts on people I don't care I'm preaching righteousness in a world of, full of wickedness I'm not ashamed of the gospel it doesn't disturb me right it doesn't it doesn't give, bring me any panic um, it's, it fulfills that verse, uh, Isaiah 28, 16. It's so beautiful. Such a powerful verse. Right. Amen. When he experienced the power, he was not ashamed. Amen, Michael. Exactly. When he experienced the power, when he realized, Amen. yeah, the when he realized, listen, as, as Saul at the time, he was persecuting Christians. And, and, and in the midst of going to persecute more Christians in Damascus, right. he was, you know, just... 
bamboozled with the Holy Spirit and Jesus. Uh, you know, I have a similar type of testimony. Not like I was going to kill Christians, but I was blaspheming God at his holy, uh, you know, at the Western Wall, the remnants of his holy temple. I was blaspheming God when God touched me and poured out hit the Holy Spirit on me. Again, a testimony. I, I, I filmed it. I'm waiting for the Lord to release when to uh, send it, but uh, to, to, you know, to make it public. But um, it's just, it's amazing. That's God's mercy. That's how much he loves us. That's how much he's like, you know what? You're, you're out there killing Christian soul, but you're actually called to be my disciple for me. You're going to be working for me. You're working for, for Satan for too long. You're not going to be working for me. So praise God. It is the power onto salvation to everyone that believes to the Jew first. And then it went out to the Gentiles. Uh, I'm going to read the next one. And also to the Greek, which means the Gentiles, right? For therein, the, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, they shall live by faith. By Amen. faith. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and just to uh, reiterate the power of God. So the gospel of God is, is the word of God in in John 1 1 it says in the beginning was the word and the word God and the word was God so God can't be separated from his word I talk about that a lot when I post stuff on Twitter but in Matthew 11 20 Jesus is Jesus speaking in red and it says all things are delivered unto me of my father and no man knoweth the son but the father neither knoweth any man the father save the son and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. So God is saying, no one, no one can know unless they know of the Son. And no one can know of the Son unless they know the Father. Right. It's an interesting thing because had Christ not come, there would have been a, a, a massive gap between us and God that sin had created. So when he came down to reveal of himself, here it says in 16, um, this is for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Amen. So we us believing that God has the ability to deliver us from sin is is the first step in our salvation. Yes. See, God can he can he can do what no amount of of animal sacrifices, what no amount of 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 vain repetitions through prayer could do. He could completely wash that sin away as if it never happened. And this is the this is the power of the gospel. Amen. When it's imparted and people have the understanding that this is not this average, everyday, ordinary God that people were just creating in their free time. The the Romans had hundreds, the Greeks had hundreds, all these other nations had hundreds of God. But this was the one true God that delivered his word and it could deliver a soul from complete and total bondage. And it's a truly powerful thing, the word of God, when it's imparted and, and rightly divided. Amen. And, Absolutely. Uh, oh, you're, you cut out. Okay. I'm sorry? No, sorry. You, you, uh, sometimes it lags, and it's just like once in a blue. Uh, I will lose the last two, two words that you said. Um, amen. I want to say this. Again, one, verse 117, chapter 117. So amazing. The power of salvation to everyone that believes. Faith is an absolute condition of salvation. It we is. have to believe. We have to believe that Jesus died for our sins on the cross. We have to believe. So here's what's interesting. For the Jews, right? For the Jews, they believed in the Torah, right? And they believed in doing well, following the Torah, following the laws, the laws of Moses. Um, and they have to switch that faith from their own works and in following the law, they, they have to switch that faith. This is, the, this is, by the way, the mystery that's revealed, right? There's a mystery, it says in the Old Testament, all these prophets say the mystery will be revealed and it was revealed when Jesus came. The mystery was revealed that they have to switch that faith from their own works. They have to switch that faith into the works of what the Messiah did, right? Jesus is the living Torah. He's the living right. word, number one. As you said, John 1, 1, um, uh, you know, the word was made flesh. 
That's right. He's the living Torah. He fulfilled all the laws because he is the living Torah. The, the word of God was breathed out the Holy Spirit. This is, it's the living word. That's why you, when you read every verse, it goes, you go deeper every time you read it. So Jesus right. is the living Torah who alone brings salvation. That's the power of God. So we have yeah. to switch our faith. The Jews have to switch their faith from the Torah and their works to the faith of of what Jesus did in his work, since he's the living Torah, who by him alone, we have this salvation, uh, this the salvation power. Here's another beautiful, beautiful verse that um, in the Old Testament, I wanna show you guys, Isaiah 45, 17. It's been highlighted to me the past four days, and it is, I, I just can't stop thinking about it, it's amazing. Isaiah 45, 17, but Israel, shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. You shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. Um, I want to look at the first part. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Right? In Paul's, all this Paul's letters, he writes, I am saved in Christ. I am living in Christ Jesus. I'm living in Jesus. By the way, Yeshua, Yeshua, Yeshua means the Lord saves. So Paul always says in the Lord, in Christ Jesus. We are saved through and in Jesus. Right? Let me go back to that verse. So, but Israel, this is a prophecy, but Israel shall be saved in the Lord, in Yeshua in Christ Jesus with an everlasting salvation. With an everlasting salvation, it says here, right? Right, um, right. Unto salvation, unto everyone that believeth. Amen. The power, that's the, sal that's the power of the blood, the power unto salvation. So how beautiful that this verse just, just talks about Jesus. I'm gonna go back to it again, Isaiah 45, 17. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord, in Jesus, through Jesus, with an ever lasting salvation onto anyone that believes rock my world right. like beautiful I just want to read this in Acts yeah 20 when you were saying that uh, uh, Israel has to um, come into this this what what, what it is, is 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 the fulfillment of these old scriptures because they also uh, hold to their old prophets so Jesus came to fulfill all the law and the prophets in um, Acts 17, it says in 27 that they should seek the Lord if they, if happily they might feel after him and find him, mm -hmm. though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also as your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. For as much then are we the offspring of God. We are not. We ought not to think that God, the Godhead is like unto silver or stone, or gold or silver or stone, graven by art and man's device. And the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Why? In verse 31, because he hath a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurances unto all men and that he raised him from the dead the dead the him is jesus christ so this isn't this isn't uh, us asking the israelites uh or or israel to forsake the, their old laws That's right. all those laws are are fulfilled in christ right and that is the misunderstanding that the um pharisees and the sadducees had they thought that Jesus was coming to do away with their old ways and their old things. And he wasn't coming to throw away the old scriptures. He was coming, he had filled them, right? So we're not asking Israel to essentially forsake God because the God of their fathers in whom they believed is, is the God that we worship right now. Amen. Amen. So good. You want to read on uh, chapter uh, verse eighteen? Hi everyone, yeah. everyone, people that are just coming in. Welcome, God bless you. We're we're in Romans that, chapter uh, one, verse eighteen. Welcome. Welcome. Okay. Kisena. Romans one, starting at eighteen. Yes. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness 
and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. And I'll read 19. Because that which we that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. Amen. For the wrath of God is revealed. Right? God does not overlook sin. He does not overlook sin in the Jewish community. He does not look, overlook sin in the Gentile community. God does not overlook sin. For I, uh, for the wrath. Actually, let me let me just move this up because so, I, I keep looking at the top one. Okay. Um, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and Amen. unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. They suppress the truth. They suppress. They hold down the truth because it's going to explain it in verse, um, in the next verse, 19, because they, they, they hold the truth and they, they suppress the truth because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. Their conscious, right. their conscious tells right. them that this is not good. This is unrighteousness. That's For right. God hath showed it to them. When you feel shame, listen, when I was like eight years old and I did, you know, I confess this and the Lord knows, I stole a CD out of CVS. A little, I think it was like an InSync CD. I felt so ashamed, you know, it was a thing that I stole out of, you know, eh, um, in CVS. And I felt so ashamed. I knew it wasn't right. I knew I wasn't supposed to do it. I, I was embarrassed. I was I was shameful. I, I it was a sin. It was unrighteous. I knew it within that I wasn't supposed to do that. Um, you know, a week later, I lost ten dollars out of my pocket, and I knew it paid for that CD. And you know what I mean? Like the Lord, there's there's punishment for un, ungodliness, unrighteousness. And you know, I stole that CD. I felt shame. I knew within it was the wrong thing to do. And you know, when I followed the Lord and asked for forgiveness and repented for everything I did in the past, it included that CD that I stole, you know, many many years ago, and was ashamed for. But you know, now it's part of the testimony that listen, we are. We're all unrighteous. Every single person. If you're without, if you say you're without sin, you're a liar. Um, we're all in, un, you know, ungodliness, godliness, and unrighteousness unless we believe and follow the Lord and we're cleansed of that. But they hold the truth. They suppress it because they know that it's not right. That it's you know when you're doing something right and when you're doing something True. wrong. Again, you either you just suppress it. So, Amen. Any, anything you have to say right. about that? And there's a reason, I mean, it's not that sin is, is the, the Bible says there's pleasure in sin. And that's, that's yeah. the truth. There, there's pleasure to be had in certain types of rebellion, like in, in the case of eight-year-old Hannah, right? It was wrong for her to steal the CD, but at the time, NSYNC was a great band. So that's even funny. though she felt ashamed, there was there was a there was a pleasure to it. Like you could listen yeah. to the the music. We see the people in the streets doing what they're doing, right? They know that it's wrong to, in our current day and age, to be rioting and destroying stuff. But what comes with the rioting is also looting. So they they're obtaining things. The pleasure of new Nikes, you know. It's, there's yeah, pleasure yeah. in new shoes, those, right? <laughs> Not yeah, having to earn it. Well, serving pleasures, but you know, right. that, that's why we need the word of God. It's and most people. Uh, there's a lot of people out there, I believe, don't know right from wrong. If I could, they, when I was five, I also stole from a, a store, and it was a store that my parents. It was right down the road from our house. We just, my, my dad just just walked me down to this corner store. Every time we went in, I got the same kid. So, um, I'm five years old. I walk in. My dad forgets to get me a candy, so I just take it and leave. But that's only because this is the routine. Mm -hmm. And my dad had to explain to me, like, this is stealing. Mm -hmm. And I was, so I didn't get the candy that day. And I was <laughs> distraught. But, you know. But your dad I didn't, taught you right. Right from wrong at the time. I just assumed yeah. my dad would just pick up the candy or he'd say, pick one out. And I would just leave with the candy. I didn't know you had to pay for it. But sure. there are people... And this is not the same in, in the case of people riding and looting. And right. Well, that's, that, that's your dad disciplining you. You were five years old. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But there, there are people out there who may be living a certain life because this lifestyle is pleasurable to me. And I, I'm, mm. I'm happy, right? And who, so how could this be bad if it makes me happy? A lot of bad things make people happy. So um, 
it's it's those things that it's living righteously is a very difficult thing to do. Mm-hmm. Sinning is easy. You can sin without even thinking about it. But living righteously that takes that takes faith, that takes focus, that takes a willingness to live right. So it also takes the Holy Spirit because I uh, uh, it's, it's hard praise, to live right without the Holy Ghost. You can't. I mean, I don't have like I. You know, it comes to a point where you have pleasure in sin when it comes to a point where you're you're a new creation in the Lord and I don't take pleasure in it. I don't want to. I feel ugh. Like I get it away from me. I am totally good. I am I have pleasure in the presence of God, you know. That's right. In, in prayer. Um man, it's like it's not worth it. And I'm gonna read some of your comments. Some of you are saying, um, at coach said suppress intentionally, deny truth. Right. right. You're suppressing intentionally. Momentary pleasure, amen. Yeah. Momentary pleasure, amen about that. Um Seems like sin is self-centered as well. It is. It is self-centered. It's selfishness. Um, I love this refocus zone says it's the pleasures. Good point. It's the pleasures of this world Satan uses to entice people to sin against God. That's right. That is. That's it. And that's, that's what the Bible says. Flee temptation. We often try to do uh, the opposite. We try to, you know, resist temptation and like flee the devil when it should be us fleeing from temptation and resisting the devil. Yes. Right. Because we have the equipment to resist the devil and fight him off. But temptation, you got to run from it. You got to run from it. The Lord said that. Amen. And like you were saying, and like as the verse says, there is pleasure in sin. And that's like Satan's deception, where it's like, it's going to be, you know, he tells his people, it's going to be so much more awesome living in this pleasure. It's it's worth it, guys. It's amazing. You can be the king of the world and have all this money and all this booze and, you know, sleeping with 100 women. Like, it's amazing. There's pleasure in it. And, and, and being with God, it's it's going to suck. That's such a right. lie of the enemy. And I remember thinking that as a child, like, oh, I don't want to, you know, why would I want to give up all this pleasure and all this awesome stuff? Okay. Christians, for, are, so Christians are so boring. Christians are so boring. And let me tell you, you know, after being saved, I have so much pleasure in being having having no shame. Like, I don't have shame on my shoulders. I don't have anything weighing me down. I don't have... You know, I go to bed resting peacefully, as it says, you know, in, in, in Proverbs as well, that, you know, the in the Psalms, the wicked don't have rest. They don't find rest when they sleep. They, like, tumble and turn um, because it's such a lie of the enemy because this pleasure is temporary. The pleasure in being with the Lord forever, let me tell you what I felt in Israel when the Lord poured out, that was that pleasure, that, that intensity of the Holy Spirit when it filled me full. That was the most amazing pleasure, euphoria, joy, happiness I could ever feel. And I knew, I knew in my spirit that this is what heaven's going to feel like 24 seven. So this little momentary little pleasure that Satan gives you to, to enjoy in sin, oh. so not worth it. And it's not even the real thing. It's not even the full pleasure that you're going to have in the spirit of God through Jesus and what we're going to experience in heaven. It's amazing. Ugh. Right. And, and I, I think about when you were saying how in Proverbs said the wicked get no rest. When I was when I was younger in my teens and early twenties and I was living a completely different lifestyle, I I got no sleep because there's a persona I had to a reputation I had to maintain. Mm. But that reputation was dangerous, but I was like, you know, I'm not gonna let anybody punk punk me and this whole mentality, this gangster mentality, and you don't get any sleep because every I by your house you're not sure if they're gonna shoot or or what, and you're stressed about your your parent. Like so, these people who are living this gangster mentality, their lives are miserable. Mm. These people who deal drugs, their lives are miserable. Why? Because if you make a certain amount of money, you have to worry about somebody robbing you. Even your friends, it's mm. it's it is the most stressful time in my life. I'm so grateful to God for His grace and His mercy. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so paranoid. And, and, yeah, you can't rest at all. There there is no rest for the wicked. Wow. You know, and I'm sure the ones that are looting and rioting, they're probably stressed out. Did the video cameras right. outside catch me? Did someone, is my face going to go viral on Twitter right now? Because this woman had a, had a iPhone, which is by the way, why Antifa, when my friend, one of my friends, when I worked in Project Veritas, he infiltrated Antifa and there were no phones allowed, no phones allowed. You can't even take it out to take a quick picture. The reason, I mean, they snatch it out of your hand and they yell at you. Are you dumb? Like put away your phone. Um, right. The reason is, is because they don't want their crimes recorded on camera, on video. And that's why you'll see 
people that are trained in Antifa or even obviously criminals are trained this way as well. Whenever they see a phone, a camera, they want to snatch it out of your hand because they don't want it out there. They don't want to go viral. They are, they're going to, because they know they're not going to be able to sleep at night, paranoid, knowing that all their crimes are on camera and that, that they can get a <coughs> knock on the door. They can't rest. There's no rest for the wicked. And That's man. Stressful stressful so why not just live righteously through jesus through the holy spirit um and be able to rest at night not worrying that the fbi are going to knock on your door <laughs> that's a great slogan come to jesus and get a good night's sleep man. oh Rich. that's a good one we got to put on a shirt come to jesus and get a good night's sleep amen, amen. <laughs> praise god do you want to keep reading Think yes um uh, 20 right yeah i'll read to that's okay. uh what should I stop? As you feel led. You can do one at a time as, as you feel led. However. For the invisible things of him, for the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the thing Ooh. Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wow. Amen. Wait, I actually want to really quickly say, um, I love at Coach what you just said, no Jesus, no peace. Amen. That's good. That's true. No yeah, Jesus, amen. no peace. Amen. That's a really good one. I'm going to tweet that. I'm going to give you credit for it. Um, or you can tweet and I'll just retweet you. Uh, amen. Um, praise God. Yeah. No, exactly. Praise God. So when we let's talk about verse 20. Right? For the things, as Kisena just read, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that there are no, there, they are without excuse. Every Amen. single human are without excuse, for they see his beautiful creation. You know, the, the um, synchronicity of nature. You know, I went to go to visit my sister's house, and she gardens, and, she, and I saw, you know, she's, guarding these beautiful plants and flowers and, and, and fruit trees and, and um, bushes of just berries and all of that. And I saw, I took a second to just play in the dirt and look and I, I, it, it, it hit me. I mean, I knew that God is real, obviously, but it really hit me like, wow, God is so methodical, obviously, in his creation. You know, the dirt needs nitrogen and all these bases to make, to grow. And earthworms need, um, you know, earthworms release nitrogenous bases for the earth, and the earth gives it nutrients as well for the earthworm, and it's it's, and and all the other bugs that live in there, and then you know creates life and trees, and it's just so beautiful, and the synchronicity of needing water, H two O, hydrogen, oxygen, um, you know, the synchronicity in nature that we see, you cannot deny that there is a master that made this masterpiece. It's not here from nowhere, you know. An uh, you know, you don't have a book without an author, you don't have um, you, you don't have a computer without a technician who made it. You don't have creation without a creator. Uh, right. It's he's seen in the invisible world. Therefore, nobody will be, nobody will have any excuse when we stand in front of God. When the non-believers stand in front of God and they say, "Well, no one told me," you know, I, I heard Jesus a little bit, but no one told me. I don't really know. God's gonna say without excuse. And right. in, in their spirit, again, that consciousness that we talk, that conscious that we talked about um, in verse 17 and, and 16, they're without excuse. They know it's wrong. They know right. it's wrong to sin and they know God is real. They just suppress the truth. And so again, he's seen, his invisible attributes are seen in the visible. So, right. you know, um, amen. Oh, I feel the presence of the Lord, amen. Uh, and verse 21, because that when they knew God, when they knew God, by the way, this word in Greek is gnosko, knew God, right? Knew, that word knew. Gnosko in Greek means to know by experience. Wow. 
It's to know by experience instinctively, right? You have an experience, you know God. So he's going to be, t so Paul is talking to the people that know God is real by experience. Meanwhile, make God such a mystery and give the people all kinds of different images of other gods of, you know, gods of frogs and all these different idols, idolatry. So these men are, and these men are without excuse as well. They knew God by experience, but they were confusing people, making God a mystery when he's not, he's no mystery, and making these fake false idols, vain yeah. images, right? Um, these vain images, they, they're going to substitute the truth with foolishness. They're going to substitute the truth of God with reasoning. So they're reasoning their way into um, substituting it for foolishness, right? The concepts of God, they're, they're, they're having these silly speculations of God and they're fooling themselves and therefore their hearts get darkened. Amen. Uh, when you think about Egypt, right? Where God is doing all those miracles, signs and wonders through Moses and Aaron and still, still, even though it's because God had hardened Pharaoh's heart, but the Egyptians, you know, it wasn't until like the very last uh, uh, plague that they were like, you know, get the, get rid of these people. Why are we fighting? Them? We can't fight their god. Our their gods were no match for for the one true God. And you think about even um, what is it? Uh, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the Book of Daniel. Mm -hmm. They they're building statues to the king telling people to praise the king and these men, wise men, right, who just were at odds with the people of God, wanted to enslave the people of God and destroy the people of God, so they set up all these rules and have statues built and, and praises going up to the statue. Um, and, and, and even though the advisors like Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had the ear of the king, the king was still pulled towards this alternative worship of a god after experiencing um, the power of the of the one true God. Even Nebuchadnezzar had experienced the power in the uh, in, of the one true God, and he's still, you know, there's just this this weird pull towards anything other than truth. It seems people, the Bible speaks about them having itching ears. That is throughout all of time and through the world over, where people are trying to make an excuse for what they know to be true so they can reason it out themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, like, oh, that can't be God. That that was probably, uh, we'll attri attribute that to science, right? Exactly. For a lot of people, science is that God, a lot of people. Right, and, and, and actually it's, it's, it's interesting because with this increase of knowledge, of this increase of science, it's, it's led to so much, um, you know, this, this, this fake wisdom that they have, you know, obviously science, the Lord created science. There's, you'll see his beautiful works right. in it, but it, 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 it let the, it leads people to become so wise. And I was one of them. I was a biologist and uh, I was going to go to medical school and I was all about biology. And I was thinking, wow, there's, uh, yeah, I was like, God can't be real. It's just, this is like, there's, you know, an amoeba and evolution and all this stuff. Right. But then right. when I actually got saved, I said, wow, actually it, it reinvigorated that beauty of biology. And I can see in, right. in a little tiny cell how absolutely beautiful it is and how absolutely complicated it is. It's a little factory. Every one cell is a factory. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the DNA, it has almost 6,000 billion base pairs, you know, 3,000 um, couple base pairs of information that unravels to code for absolutely everything in your body and on your body, your hair, your eye color, everything. Uh, it's encoded. And by the way, an amoeba has only about one million base pairs. So even if you evolve from an amoeba to a human, from one million to six billion, uh, you can't actually evolve because where did that extra information come from? Where did it come from? It came from a divine creator. It's the one who wrote, you know, if you if you pull out the DNA 6,000 you know, base pairs, it would fill up thousands of books. You put up books on top of each other. Uh, it, would, it would, I think someone said it would go like up a, like a mile and a half high. I mean, it's, 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 it's a lot of books. So that's compacted into one little tiny cell and of information that it codes for. So, um, amen. Uh, I wanna say, so my point of, this increase of knowledge, right? Uh, always learning knowledge. Second Timothy chapter four, 
Second right. Timothy, I'm sorry, Second Timothy, cha- yes, chapter four, verse three. Uh, oh no, actually, that's Second Timothy, chapter three, where you're constantly learning, but never being able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Second Timothy, chapter right. three. Um, because they were reasoning themselves, as we were saying, we're, they're reasoning themselves to the point where they are constraining and conflating or, or disrupting God. God, They're disrupting um, such a simple point of who God is and to worship him and to not be idolaters and not be adulterers and not do all this wicked stuff. It's very simple. The gospel is very simple. Right. Um, so they, they were conflating these concepts of God with these silly speculations where they became fools, became darkened. By the way, that verse where it says, you know, where they became fools that they, to the point where their, their hearts were darkened. Um, and they're at verse 21, and their foolish heart was darkened. Right. The Aramaic can't be translated to this. <laughs> they became insane. Right. <sighs> Fools. They became to the point where they became insane, and in that you know their heart, because their heart was darkened, and so it's so amazing. Yeah, someone said it's amazing that the smallest details prove that there is a God. I know it's absolutely amazing. Yeah, DNA is imprinted. It's it's God. So it's so again they fool themselves and they knew they know that He's God, but they have totally um, made idols. So let's keep going. Okay. Uh- <clears throat> okay, so we're at verse 24, yes, right? Yes, verse 24. Okay, wherefore God gave them up to uncleanness through their lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the, cre- the creature more than the creator who was blessed forever. Amen. So, I yeah. mean, this is, go ahead. you want to you wanna say something? No, no, go ahead. You go. Oh, so, I see a lot of people speaking about mm. work, uh, worship mm-hmm. in, in the midst of a situation. Yeah. That's a big thing. I didn't want to overlook that. And yeah. I saw the uh, Philippians 2.13 scripture mm. from Paul... But no, stop, Greg. Greg, stop. Mm-hmm. God bless you. I appreciate that. But here in this scripture, who changed the truth of God into a lie. All mm-hmm. right. So. Oh, by the way, I, I don't mean to cut you off, but speaking of worship, by the way, Kasena and his band, he sent me one of his songs. Oh my God. It's so anointed. It's so beautiful. I'm going to link it below. Attach this periscope. Check it out. Support. I mean, beautiful, anointed, anointed worship anointed so beautiful Kasena. um and it says in the bible don't don't let any man like don't praise yourself have let someone else praise you i'm praising you right. and i'm saying hallelujah jesus for the gifts that he has given you and your band your worship music is fire fire and i love the song come to the table i had it on loop by the way when you sent it to me i have it on loop it was all day long i'm like what i felt the presence of god the whole entire time Praise God, so powerful. Um, come to the table, um, but I'll I'll post a link down below in, in this, you know, on, under this tweet, so you'll be able to hear it as well. But you were gonna say? Oh, thank you. Appreciate. Bless you. Um, I was gonna say that uh, we changed the truth of God into a lie. This is the. Uh, we'll probably get into it in a later Bible study, but this is a type of doctrine of devil that um, yes. Paul speaks about in later letters. Um, so. You see changing the truth of God into a lie. We see it in the very, very beginning in Genesis, where it's a simple question. Um, Satan asks Eve, you know, did God say you can't eat of every fruit? And he was and he was like, No, just this one. We can't eat it or touch it. And then Satan is like, No, 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 that's not exactly true, right? Mm-hmm. It's this with this desire to because we are finite, right? We are limited in our ability to comprehend, to explain, but God is infinite in mm-hmm. his ability to do above and beyond anything we can ever ask or think of, right? That is why he is God. So this yes. makes sense when you're saying the Greek, that word, uh, when they knew God to, was to come to that knowledge, mm-hmm. was when their hearts were darkened, they were actually going insane right so to try to reason out Mm -hmm. uh 
why God is and how he does the things that he does. This is what leads people to con- to confusion, right? Yeah. There's certain revelations, like even in the book of Revelation, God tells John, the revelator, he's like, hey, that stuff that you just saw, don't write that down, mm-hmm. right? Because there's certain things that we just we just can't handle right. as human beings because we're limited in our capability to process information. As incredible as the brain is that God created and gave us, mm-hmm. we are limited in our understanding of certain things. So people, when they can't, you see, you hear this a lot, when people can explain certain things, they'll just say, okay, well, since I can't reason it out, it must be this way. Mm-hmm. And that's what leads people to a lot of confusion and you see this here, uh, God also gave them up unto uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts. They were like, okay, I want to, so this also ties into that uh, pleasure and sin. They want to do something. They can't, they can't find a way to defy it. So there's like a certain amount of times that God will, you know, tug at you and tug at you and tug at you. And eventually he'll, he'll let you go, mm-hmm. right? Because even in the word, I can't remember the scripture, but the Bible talks about how some people, you have to let them go for a time yeah, and then they'll experience something yeah. and then they'll come back. Yeah, Paul said and, that to, 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 to let them go and let Satan deal with them. Right, and they'll right. run back and say, I don't want that. Right. <laughs> you know? and, and the beauty about this is God is been like, you know what? You want to you wanna go, to, go to hell? He's not saying that. He's mm-hmm. like, all right, listen, I keep on trying to pull you and protect you from this, but it looks like you need to experience this to understand my love. And it's a be- the beauty about that is God is married. The Bible says God is married to the backslider. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't give us an excuse yes. to commit sin after sin after sin. Like, oh, right. his grace, we can just keep coming back after we sin. That's not what I'm saying. Yeah, it's like, I'm saying exactly. In this scripture, God, you know, he, he allowed people who were trying to leave to leave. He so allowed Israel they, to do that, right? Israel right. had a covenant with God, but they were backslidden, right? They were um, they they were making false idols as well, under you know, with Aaron. I mean, hello, uh, no, no, uh, adultery. Moses was up in the mountain for a couple of days, and they're like, you know what? Make us a god, Aaron. We need something to worship. Like, like make this golden calf, Aaron. We need something to worship. You right. know, Moses is gone. Sense. Meanwhile, Moses is getting the laws from God, and they have this covenant with God, and here they are in spiritual adultery. Spiritual adultery. Right. And that's the same right. thing with the backslidden. They're in spiritual adultery, fornicating right. with the devil, and, and allowing the devil to put sin on them again. And, um, you know, I, I, I talk about that in one of my YouTube videos, and one of the dreams I had was I, I was saved, but I was a new Christian, and I didn't know that fornication was sin. So I kept allowing the devil keep putting sin on me, and it was weighing me down. For Second Timothy chapter three, which is one of my favorite, one of my my favorite chapter, uh, but I talk about the dream the Lord gave me, and it woke me up. Like I, I, it woke me up. It scared me to death when the Lord took me to hell for that, you know, ten minute dream. It freaked me out. You can check it out more of it on there. But exactly what you're saying, right? So by the way, refocus on where are we're on uh, verse twenty five. Right. So Sorry. exactly the truth being replaced with a lie. I love how you beautifully beautifully brought it back to Genesis with Adam and Eve. They substituted the, a lie with the truth that God gave them, and that was Satan's ability to trick them. And the devil will do that often. He will plant uh, seeds of doubt in your mind, um, whether it be your faith in God, whether it be, you know, you're not, you're not saved, you're going to hell, I'm taking you with me. There's so many different seeds of doubt that the devil loves to throw into our mind, but we just have to keep bringing it back to the word. Like, no, um, no, <laughs> I am saved not by my obedience, but by right. his obedience, by Jesus' obedience. And he teaches me to be obedient every single day. Hallelujah. And Amen. praise God for that. <laughs> Coach said Satan is the originator of spin. That is the absolute truth. Mm-hmm. Takes something and makes it something it's not. Exactly. Goodness. Praise God. Keep reading. Oh, oh, by the way, uh, don't mean to cut you off. Someone said, can you save this video? I know my mom would want to see this Bible study later. Yes. Um, I will post this. It's either, if, one, it's going to remain on my Periscope, or two, I'm, I usually upload it the next day. So you will see this Bible study on my YouTube video, You can on my YouTube channel. So you can click on the link in my profile later on, and you will it'll go to my YouTube page, and I post all the Bible studies there. So either Periscope or YouTube channel a little later. A little later on in the week. 
All right, so. Amen. Starting at 26, we're in verse 26 now. Verse 26. Yeah. 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 Uh, I will read the next two. Is that okay? Amen, yeah. Okay. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error, which was leaked. I have, there's a scripture I want to read, but I got to look it up first. Sure. Sorry. So you can go ahead. I'll, I'll jump in. Yeah, they're receiving back you know, in full, for full, in full retribution for their sin, right? So God is righteous, but his wrath is also righteous. He's absolutely righteous to, he's the, a judge. He's the ultimate judge. And I mean, for example, you know, how could God be righteous if he doesn't, um, if he doesn't judge Hitler? How can God, how can God not be righteous if he didn't judge Stalin? How could he, how? He, he, he's all good and all righteous, but he's, he's also very all just. And it is righteous to, um, to judge. <laughs> Righteousness and, and, and judge, judgment, it is righteousness. It's God's righteousness. He doesn't want to, but he has to because it's a law that he has written. He can't take it back. Just like in Esther, when we read the book of Esther, we did that Bible study. Um, where we saw that back in the day when kings made laws, when kings made decrees, they couldn't go back on it. That's the same thing with God. He can't go back on his laws. First of all, it's his nature, righteousness, right? Um, he can't go back and say, actually, sin is okay. No, that, that, that sin's fine. He can't. He made it a law. And it's, the law is even higher than his, his name in some in a verse it says. His law is higher than even his name. He is can't go back on it that's who he is by nature and when he gave those laws to Moses he can't go back on it but what he could do since as human nature in our human nature we can't possibly fulfill all the laws all, all the time because when we get angry that's a sin when we you know curse at someone that's a sin um, in our human nature we can't but it's only through Jesus who fulfilled all the laws who by his blood that he shed he took that judgment so God, the judgment that we deserve, Gentiles and, and Jews, the, gent the, 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 the wrath of God that we all deserve because of his righteousness, Jesus had paid the fine. He had right. taken that retribution for sin, right? The Amen. wages of sin is death. He has taken that upon himself. So in the Greek as well, um, that receiving back in full retribution, uh, recompense for, for sin which is actually in verse 27, when you talk about, um, you know, and likewise also the men leaving the natural use of women burned in their lust one toward one another, men with men working that which is unseen, unseemly and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error, which they met. So the recompense, the, um, you know, retribution, which STDs, HIV, you know, all of that uh, is, it weakens their body, right? And that's the that's recompense right. of their sin. And um, this is the scripture that pops into my head. I wanted to double check it and yeah. make sure it was correct. Um, so I'm going to read from in First Corinthians in verse chapter six, verse fifteen. Mm -hmm. This is why um, uh, Paul is speaking about these these specific sexual sins that can do damage to the body. It's because your body is a t is was made for as a temple for God to inhabit. That's right. Right. So, uh, in chapter six, verse fifteen, it says, "Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take a member of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. Mm -hmm. What know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body?" For he saith he shall be one flesh, right? So you can't when 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 the Bible speaks about a man leaving his mom and dad and then um, coming together with with a woman and the two shall become one. That is that is 
that is a biblical principle that can't be moved, removed. And it doesn't go away because we are um, not married to the person. The, 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 the deed of sex was created specifically for marriage. Um, so here, when it's speaking about joining together with a, with a harlot, when, when you, you, know, you, you, you essentially connect uh, with the people that you sleep with, right? So yeah, it's spiritual. You sex is spiritual mm-hmm. and physical. Yeah, spiritually and physically. That's why so many people in our day and age, they say to themselves, oh, this, this, this guy is stuck on me. Yeah, but you're one now. That's why. Yeah. So when you leave that person, the reason they're stuck is because a piece of them is being torn away. And imparted. <laughs> right. Yeah. And people don't understand the gravity of, of what that actually means. And if you can, if we continue on in, um, in, chapter 6 verse uh, 17 it says but he that is joined unto the Lord is one yes. spirit so when you when you come to know the truth and, and you you receive the Holy Spirit and, and God you're a new creature in Christ the reason that you're a new creature in Christ is because you are joined unto the Lord and you become yes. one with him exactly right? through the blood you, through right? the Holy and Spirit. you continue to like you were saying like you can't continue to fornicate with the devil right so it says here in 18, flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth with, 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 without the body, every sin that a man doeth is without the body, mm-hmm. right? So stealing, uh, murder, uh, lies, lies. That's, that's on mm-hmm. the outside. Mm-hmm. But he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. Mm-hmm. What? Know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God and ye are not of your own. Mm-hmm. For ye are bought with the price, therefore glorify God. So the the body, even though there's places for pleasure, that's evident. Yeah. God created the body that way. So when we are joined together in marriage, there is pleasure in, in sex, and that's not a bad thing. Exactly. That's, that, that's the, what God ordained. That's his will. But to do this, to join yourself with another man or join yourself with an, uh, multiple women or for women to join themselves. Anything together. before marriage, exactly. All of that as well. Right. It, these are sins against your own yeah. body. So you're yeah. you're essentially hurting yourself, right? That's what he's conveying. You're, you're hurting yourself when you, when you engage in these things. Yeah. And that's why people are, encourage them to turn away from these things. And I love what you said about, you know, this one, this, we are now, that's why Paul always says, we are in Christ. We are in Christ Jesus, right? We are in him. And we are, it's, we're in Jesus, through Jesus, we're able to uh, be righteous and in, in, in our faith in Jesus, right? We're able to be righteous. We're all, and he's the bridge between us and the Father because we had sin in between us. And Jesus was that, is that bridge through sin covers the sin with his blood and we're able to be one with the father and we're able to be one with the father because he sent the holy spirit as well so it's this you know we're the holy spirit is within us so we are one with the holy spirit through jesus to the father and and this is what i believe this is this is not theology this is just what i believe when 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 people ask about you know how is god one you know we have three dynamic personalities three dynamic persons but right. how can it be one? I believe in the way that I kind of explain it is that you have God the Father and you have the Son of God, Jesus, and you have the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is in Jesus and in the Father and they're made one. So as it says in Genesis, like you were saying, where, where uh, you know, men and women will, will cleave from their parents and be married and become one flesh. It's the same thing spiritually as spiritually as well. You become, you know, Jesus, God, and the Father God are one. They're three personalities, but they're one because of the Holy Spirit in them and within them and through them. I mean, that's, again, this is this is what I, this is how I believe and what I explain. I might be wrong, but um, that's the same thing when you're ta- when we're talking about sex. Where Jesus, where God right. said, you have sex with a woman or a man or whatnot, you are made one. You're made one. So you are, it's not just physical, it's also spiritual. And, um, you know, and, and this is what kind of annoys me with the churches and back in the day and also today. The constant come after homosexuality, oh, it's a sin, it's a sin, it's evil. 
but they don't talk right. about adultery. They don't mm-hmm. talk about fornication before marriage, you know, heterosexual sex before marriage. Like, stop right. just pinning it on the homosexuals. Focus on heterosexual sins that we're doing also in the church. Um, right. You know, uh, call out adultery from the pulpit. Call right. out fornication. Right. Hello, it's not being preached as much um, anymore. And it's always, and, and that's why it's sad because the homosexual community is like, well, they constantly shame attack us, her. attack right. us. Why would I want to go to church? I don't want to be attacked the whole time. But it's like, right. listen, liars are sinners. Whether you're heterosexual and let's say you're not committing adultery, if you're lying, that's worthy. You're wor- you are you are unworthy of heaven. You are worthy for God's wrath, okay? All you deserve is wrath. Even if I stole one CD from CVS when I was eight, um, I'm still worthy of wrath of God. And he's totally just to send me to hell for stealing a CD because he's totally good. He's amazing and, and righteous and perfect. So um, it, we're all sinners, exactly, Tony. We are all sinners. We're unworthy of heaven, going straight to hell, but it's only through Jesus, the Messiah, the one who was the obedient one in the whole world, right? The one, and this is why John in Revelation, he was mourning when, uh, when, when the angel was asking, is there anyone on earth that's worthy to open up the scroll, this last seven scroll? And John was mourning because not one person is able to open that scroll. Not one person was obedient except the Lord Jesus. He was the only one his, by his obedience through him, you know, in him, through him is the power of salvation for our souls. So amen. So yeah, let's finish this up. We're almost done. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. So, verse twenty-eight. Yeah. Right. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Um, I'm just going to read to the end. Is mm-hmm. that right? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Exactly. It's all one thing. Mm-hmm. Yes, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate. Deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only to do the same but have pleasure in them that do, do them. Mm. Reprobate. Reprobate. Depra- depraved, yeah. right? Unprincipled. Right. Wickedness. Um, you know, this unrestrained selfishness. Right, that, that <laughs> conscience seared with a hot iron kind of yeah. lifestyle. Exactly. Right. And the Lord gives right. them up to their own their own reprobate mind, their own depraved, wicked mind. God's like, okay, you know, God is a gentleman. Jesus is a gentleman. He won't force you. First of all, he won't force you into heaven. (laughs) You, you, you can, you pick heaven on your own. You know, God doesn't, this is why it's so interesting when atheists always say, well, why would a loving God send people to, 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 to hell? I said, God doesn't choose anyone, send anyone to hell. You send yourself to hell. You choose to be stubborn and choose to have a reprobate mind. You choose to have this unrestrained selfishness in your own pleasure and what you're doing over the pleasure of God, right? Second Timothy chapter three as well. Um, and, and, you know, and where it says non, not convenient, uh, in verse 28, those things, which God gave them over to reprobate mind to do those things, which are not convenient, not convenient, meaning not proper, right? Not, not proper being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, uh, maliciousness, full of envy, murder. Murder, by the way, Jesus explained, murder is hate. When you hate your brother, you're committing murder. Debate, deceit, uh, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, of all evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers. Covenant breakers are, they're, they're not dependable. Right, people that break their word. They can't keep their promise, exactly. They can't keep their promise without natural affection, uh, implacable, unmerciful, unmerciful. A lot of mercilessness out there. Exactly, so much lack of mercy, my goodness. Like young men who can 
execute a man in the street, that is what a merciful is. Yeah. Want to see? Oh, you kind of cut out. Say that again. Say that last sentence again. You cut Wanna out. Want to see rates in in yeah. in our world? Just watch. Turn. Oh, I think my computer's overheating. Say that again. <laughs> I said, if you want to see these traits, yes. can you hear me? I can hear you now. All we have to do is turn on the news. Yes. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Yeah. You might not see it on the street. You know, you do, but you really get to see what's going on. The wickedness, the un, you know, the, the lack of mercy, the, you know, conceited, selfish. Um, it says without self-control in second Timothy chapter three, without self-control, can't control these right. fellas. You can try to talk to them and love on them, and it's like now, and they scream and freak right. out, and this like temper tantrums right. of little children. But it's really temper tant tantrums because we don't battle against flesh and blood. Um, right. You know, uh, if, if, if Ephesians, we don't battle is six two. We don't battle against flesh and blood. We battle. We don't battle against flesh and blood. We battle against principalities, right. rulers of darkness, and right. spiritual wickedness in high places. And, you know, the stubbornness, it's like, it, these are all manifestations of the devil. They're full of the devil. And listen, I want to say this. I would rather be called a Jesus freak, because people call me Jesus freak all the time. I'm right. like, hallelujah, praise God. I am absolutely a Jesus freak, because I would rather be a Jesus freak than a Satan freak, without even knowing right. about it. So I am happily a Jesus freak. I take that as a compliment. Thank you. I, it's like a badge of honor. So, yes, right. amen. You know, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. <laughs> yeah. And it's this this one too. Uh, backbiters, uh, people who um, will say cut face and then gossip you the next second. People don't understand how you know dangerous a, a lot. A lot of these things are the, this, these sins listed here, right? So they're they're dangerous. All right, just about all of these. It within with behind any person, it can it can bring about death. So I like that you said. Uh, 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 people that hate people um, are uh, commit murder. Like that's what the word says. Mm -hmm. And it's it's interesting too because you think like, how can I, um, I? If I hate someone, I don't want to kill them. But if you hate someone, right? How far do people go with hate? Like if you want to see some hate, what we have to do is turn on the TV. So how far do people go with hate? Like it's you it's can even turn on right? Twitter, by the way. Just on Twitter, someone was saying, but just turn on Twitter, you'll see a bunch of hate, left and right. 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 You, you look at it and you say, oh, well, get rid of these people. Do this, do this. Oh, I would do anything to get rid of these people. And eventually people take their their own hands and are attempting to get rid of these people. Or it's something as, as malicious as seeing someone in a situation where they could lose their lives and pretending like you didn't see anything. That That's hate, too. That's right. Like not speaking up when you should be speaking up. Mm -hmm. that's, that, that's a form of hate. We are, we, and this is what mm -hmm. the issue like we everybody's so oh. but you remember like Cain was asking like am I my brother's keeper I make an yeah. effort when I'm out anywhere oh, my. I can't even believe how many times I'm catching kids as they're falling out of shopping carts because mm. people aren't paying attention I know and it's, it's as simple as that like just be aware of your surroundings. We should be saying things um, like, hey, this this is, be careful you don't slip, right? Be careful that this isn't happening. Like, you mind your own business. My, can, listen, your parents, you're yeah. you're absolutely your your, chi your child's keeper. You need to monitor their right. Instagram, their their social media. The, they have to. Continue, though. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. They have to do this. Uh, we have to be hyper aware and be the best. Be be the be the Christ that because we're 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 the only kind of Jesus that people are gonna see. So and people are like oh, Senna, how do you reach people? And I very rarely um, talk about Jesus unless people engage with me. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes when they do engage with me, it's because they're like, Senna, this is what I've seen you do. Why? And then that's when I talk about Jesus. Or someone said, Why are you are you in such a good mood? That's when mm -hmm. I'm talking about Jesus. Right, but some people, the Bible says, he who wins a soul is wise. So I'm, I'm right. very cautious, you know, because wrong hands. I just, we were just speaking about this the other day, Anna, can be in the wrong hands, used the wrong way, can be deadly. You know, you can, you can kill a soul if you're not careful with the word. It's a double-edged sword. Yeah, right, that's right. But we have 
careful with the way that we administer, not water down the truth, but to be wise in when we're interacting with people. Like when you said, like, Yvonne. we're so focused on yeah. homosexuality, but we never address these other sexual sins that are extremely carnal, right? Mm -hmm. So In Christians, can, in Christians, w yeah. whether it be anger, as someone said, you know, how, how can you... How can you love, uh, someone said, um, we must love our enemy. How can we, you know, how can we hate anyone? We're not supposed to love, hate anyone. We're, We're supposed to love everyone. I feel the presence right. of God. That's Those direct word, amen. Exactly, because to hate your brother or hate anyone outside, um, you know, in the non-believing world is is sin. It's it's murder. It's murder in our right. heart. And um, yeah, and, and it's, it's it, exactly, all sin is carnal. And it's amen. something that, no, I have had to repent on as well. Um, being, yeah, on, you know, where I found myself, you know, I'm very active on Twitter. That's my favorite platform. And, you know, I, I go there and I voice my opinion. And, and, and I, I had to repent because, to the Lord because I found myself very carnal, very right, right. angry, very frustrated. Obviously, it's very frustrating to see what's going yeah. on. But... I was, I was tapping into what the devil was doing and his work right. and his plan and his anger. And, um, you know, vengeance is not mine. Vengeance is for the Lord. You know, it's his vengeance to, to take care of it. I had to disconnect from, I don't even watch or read much of my Twitter feed anymore or on Facebook. I don't really even use Facebook, but um, I had to tap out of that and focus on the word, focus on God, focus on prayer, getting into his love and his, into his spirit and flow that way. And as you can tell, my Twitter has changed over the past four or five months because especially past like two months where it's all the word of mostly the word of God, mostly, you know, um, trying to shine a light in such a dark world and also dark Twitter and dark social media where, you know, the Lord has brought me, has convicted me in it. Um, he's like, Anna, you're, you're, you're hating on these people, Antifa and all that. Why, why aren't you praying for them? Why aren't you holding a prayer session for them? Why, why, why aren't you doing more? Why are you adding, you know, again, you're not battling against flesh and blood, but against principalities, rules of darkness, uh, wickedness, spiritual wickedness in, in high places. Anna, that is your, that's your enemy. That's who your enemy is. Your enemy is not other people. They're being right. used by Satan. Pray for them. Break through. My Holy Spirit is. It can reach anybody and everybody. You know, it reached me when I was blaspheming God. You know, it reached right. Paul on his way to kill and kill and stone Christians. Um, right. Well, actually, at that time they were Jews, right? Right. These and even Jews after stoning, he he had consented to. He had a hand in killing uh, Stephen. Uh, exactly. Of, he of, was standing there. Yeah. He probably he was throwing stones as well. Amazing, amazing. Exactly. He, he was there to witness it. And, and you know, um, but again, Jesus said just hating your brother is considered murder. It's just as wicked. It's just as wicked as lifting up a stone and killing them as it is to hate your brother. And you have to forgive them first and um, take it to the Lord. So, yeah, the Lord has convicted me. And there's all of this is sin worthy of judgment, worthy of God's wrath. <laughs> but praise right. God, we are in the covenant of the Lord and in through Christ Jesus. And I'm going to go back to, again, Isaiah 45, 17, because it's not yes. just for Israel. We're, we're, we're also the seed of Abraham because of faith, right? The faith of right. Abraham uh, uh, made him righteous. So I'm going to go back to Isaiah 45, 17. But Israel, which was a prophecy by Isaiah, but Israel shall be saved in the Lord, in Yeshua, in Jesus, with an everlasting salvation. With an everlasting salvation through Christ Jesus. Amen. God is love. Someone said, that's why though all, uh, small acts said, that's why through all the evil showering right now, it means Christ is near. He is at the door. Amen. Someone's refocus zone said, I noticed right away how your Twitter feel, feed changed almost overnight to be more God focused. Amen. It's a, yeah. It's a fuck. Like yeah. the, 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 the line between, uh, walking and speaking truth and that line there's a fine line there between speaking truth and, you know, essentially bashing people and, and attacking them, right? Because you want to say, hey, this is wrong. I'm going to pray for you guys. I want it to change. And then you hear some people saying, this is wrong. It's like, well, that's, that's a bit extreme, you know, because God is forgiving. So yeah. we should, uh, 
you know, the Bible says, blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. It's a good time for people to be praying for the enemies and, right. and trying to showcase some of God's love to mercy so that when the time comes, if you're in need of a little love, grace, and mercy, you can also obtain. Exactly. As Jesus said as well, he didn't come, for the first time he came into the world, he said, I didn't come here to condemn you, but to save you. Amen. Um, next time he comes, he's going to come to judge. So we as well, being in Christ... We're not to condemn them. We are to um, love them into repentance. But it's really not us that's doing the work. It's the Holy Spirit within us that does that, pulling Amen. in to him, to the Lord, to the throne of grace. Because as it says in Romans 2, 4, one of my favorites, that Amen. is through God's goodness that leads people into repentance. It's so beautiful. Some people are saying, thank you so much. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Um, it's always so beautiful to be with y'all and, and go through Amen. the word. and Yeah. You're saying, can us? Uh, Greg was saying, can we make a joke every once in a while? You can make jokes. Yeah. I mean, that's a fine line too, there, man. It's a fine line too. Yeah, and it says in the word as well. Um, you know, where where Paul said, was it in Thessalonians? I'm trying to remember where it was. Where where Paul said, you know, um, I'm trying to remember where it was. But Paul was I, saying. Uh, Paul was saying, you know, don't have lewd jokes. Like, careful with your lewd jokes. When when we're, when when he says like lewd jokes, he's meaning like nasty disgusting jokes like um i have you know there's there are holy jokes like i want to tell you something as well this is something that i noticed through my walk is that the lord has a sense of humor he does yeah. he has a sense of humor um and it's not it's it's totally righteous and good like he loves to laugh it even says psalm 2 where uh where it says you know why 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 are the nations raging why are they you know, trying to come against me and my anointed. He said, he that sits in the, 11, he that sits in the heavens laughs and holds them in derision. Right. He laughs, like he, he does laugh, you know? And um, I've, and I, I have some personal experiences that I'm not gonna share, but um, they're private they're between me and the Lord. But there are times where I'm like, oh my God, he's totally like laughing at me right now. And I'm laughing at my, and we're like laughing and I felt the presence of God. And I'm like, wow, Lord, you have a sense of humor. That's actually really funny um, where right. I, uh, yeah, and actually one of them I'm going to share in the test and, and one of the testimonies when the Lord took me to Texas. I used to think, by the way, you know, when I was saved, I used to think, I used to not read the word. I used to listen to it audibly on Audible. And I used to think they were saying uh, mammoth, not mammon, but mammoth. So I was like, Lord, why do they keep saying mammoth? Like, why is the mammoth in there? And the Lord brought it back. And when he brought me to Texas, he like showed me. And, he, and, and I, I could tell he was like laughing. And I was laughing with him. It was one of the moments where I'm like, wow, I'm really silly. And he, I, I just felt him like laughing. And I was just like, that's not what I was trying to say, but it's cute, you know. Um, but yeah, the Lord has a sense of humor. So I don't think there's anything wrong with joking. But just keep it like holy, you know. Don't be like disgusting about it. Um, yeah, it's okay to laugh. Have fun, right. being joyful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Lord is our strength. That's what the Bible says. Like, oh, someone said, hi, Anna. When are you going to go over Hebrews? You mentioned the other day. I'm actually thinking, by the way, to jump on Wednesday. So Mondays, we're going through Romans. Today, we did chapter one. Next week, we're going to, on next Monday, we're going to do Romans chapter two. Um, and so on and so forth until we hit Revelation and go through that as well. And Wednesdays is kind of like a random topic, what the Holy Spirit puts on my heart. And I have just gotten such amazing revelation about Hebrews chapter 7 and uh, also Genesis 14, 18 and Psalm 110, which is all combined into one. It's beautiful. And I was literally blew my mind I was talking to Kasena we were on the we were uh chatting um and I'm like Kasena I can't even think like my mind is blown like it's so blown I might be new to I'm probably new to this revelation everyone else probably knows about it but it's so awesome I think I'm gonna do it on Wednesday so even okay. though even though Hebrews is coming in our you know after Ro, you know Romans and Corinthians and all that it's, we're coming there I think I'm gonna just do chapter 7 Wednesday and when I get to Hebrews I'll probably skip over 7 and I'll say hey I made a video about it before so I'm probably gonna do that this Wednesday it's mind-blowing so for those who want, want to write it down Hebrews chapter 7 Genesis 14 18 and um, Psalm 110 go through it study it read it um, I need to get these notifications from you. I, the, I don't, okay. Um, honestly, it's always the funniest with God. It's like he knows and sees all how we, how can we not laugh? Exactly. Amen. Someone's enjoyed it. Praise God. Nice job. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's my first time seeing y'all. What time are the studies? So the studies are live Monday, Wednesday, 2 p.m. Eastern time. 
Uh, sometimes we go an hour, sometimes we go an hour and a half, sometimes we go two and a half hours, like the Book of Esther. Ksenia's going to be dropping in here and there. Um, I'd love to have you every time, and as, as your schedule allows it, as the Holy Spirit leads. Um, uh, yeah. this, Monday, and on occasion, Monday, Wednesdays. Perfect. I've cleared up my Mondays moving oh, forward. Oh, so sweet. So you'll be joining me Mondays. Amazing. Praise God. That sounds great. I love it. Um... And I also want to have a feature somehow to maybe even have a like a phone call where you guys can, you know, just call in and, and we get to hear you and something that the Holy Spirit's leading you to say or, you know, this, it's great to also, I, we read, your, we read your comments on Periscope, but it's also great to, uh, you know, if the Lord allows to have you guys chime in as well and, and uh, maybe even read some verses and go through it and it'd be beautiful. So I want to be able to incorporate that as well as again, it's like a Bible study, not that we're just preaching. It's just, it's a Bible study together. We're all together and it's so great that the Lord allows us to happen and, and praise God, bless you, bless you. Um, and I want to say one thing, side note, there is, uh, I just got, an, I just got a phone call about um, doing some some side work, some independent contract work for a company. I'm not, I can't, I'm not gonna announce it yet, I will eventually, but um, it might change the schedule of the Bible studies. So keep it in prayer, keep me in prayer, have to have wisdom of when to have a consistent Bible study that won't disrupt work and that won't disrupt you guys, our time together. So I like to keep things consistent. I don't like to just make a plan and then go back on it. I, I wanna keep it consistent. So. Hopefully it will stay Monday, Wednesdays. It might just be one day. It might be moved over Saturdays maybe. But keep that in prayer. Um, it is really good. I know it's the Lord having me do this. So with, with this job, it's I can't wait to tell you more about it. But um, it's, uh, it's it's crucial at this time. So, But it's, it might, it's gonna affect my schedule. So I, keep it in prayer of when to have these Bible studies. Again, it's cool that it's live and we're all together. Um, but Brother K, Brother Kasena, God yes. bless you. Thank you for being a part of this Bible study. We will see you next Monday. Thank Praise you. God. I just want to bless you. Lord, we just right now, we just pray. We bless everyone that's watching right now that maybe just even tuned in right now. Lord, we bless them as well, Lord God. Father God, may you lead them to the throne of grace for any unbelievers that are watching. Because sometimes we have atheists that watch and that say, I've never been to a sermon. I've never been to a lecture. But this was super interesting. So, Lord, I pray that you lead them to your throne of grace, to repentance, Lord God. For it's before, you know, apostleship and all that, first comes grace. And first comes repentance, then comes grace, Lord. So we are saved through the power of your blood, through faith, Lord God. Through faith, we are made righteous, Lord God. So we bless your holy name, Lord. We thank you for your son, Yeshua HaMashiach, Lord. We bless everyone that's on, that's listening and watching and going to replay it later, Lord. We bless them in their households, Lord. We pray for salvation to break through, through gloriously, Lord, in their households, Lord. We bless them in the blood of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. Well, praise God, Amen. everyone. Kasena, until next time. Yes. We'll see y'all shortly. God.